Hello students. So today we are going to understand a very important concept which is a very interesting also that you have seen that there are different countries, there are different form of government but have you ever wondered that why these different form of government are important to run a country, to run a government, right? We have seen that there are different countries in the world who often thought about different form of governance like when you talk about North Korea, when we talk about the Russia, when we talk about China, they all have different form of government, right? Now in this different form of government, we have seen that democracy is a form of government, then there is a, a arbitrary power like in North Korea with a Kim Jong has a form of governance like the in China, the Maoist government basically running the whole communist government in one form, the single government in the country. But why there are different form of government is important in different countries. Like just take an example of India. In India, we are running the largest democracy in the world. We have our elected representatives, we are taking care of all the different peoples from different religion, different caste, different communities, the laws are making for them, they, their interest, their economic, their social, their political interest are taken care by the government, right? But why the idea of this arrangement of sharing the power, right? Now government is sharing the power with different organs, right? Like in case the executives, PM, president, ministers, they are an important section of government. Similarly, the judiciary or we can say the parliament, these are important constitutes the organs of the government in democratic system all over the world and they are sharing the power. But what was the idea of this power, right? When we talk about this idea of power, we often thought that the power sharing is important concept. Now what is power sharing? So in this particular concept of power sharing, we will understand a case study between two countries that is the Belgium, a European country and a Sri Lanka which is an Asian country, an Indian neighbor, right? So let's understand, first of all, as we can say that the parliament, the, the main lawmaking body in any country has a responsibility to make laws for the people. But just take an example, when any country got independence from any other country, any colonialism country like India has freed from the colonialism uh, with the rule of British. So what type of government actually they want to form? What type of democratic arrangement or any other form of government they want to form, right? So when we talk about power sharing, power sharing is a concept of governance. Now governance, it is not government. Governance means to run a country. Now power sharing is a concept of go governance to run a country and in this power is shared among the different units. Power is shared among the people also indirectly. Power is shared among the different organs of the government. So let's understand. So power sharing is a concept of governance with a model of government and its functions among the population. Now Indian people Indian citizens choose their government in elections of Lok Sabha and Vidhan Sabha into the respective states, right? So when we talk about the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha and the respective states and the form of government, we often talk about the executives who make laws. Just take an example, if these executives become arbitrary, arbitrary means they can do whatever they want to do. Just take an example of Myanmar, there is a military rule going on in Myanmar, democracy has been demolished, right? When we talk about the neighboring country Pakistan, there is an unstable form of government in Pakistan, who will run the country? There is no any, any sort of idea, right? So when we talk about to run a government, we want a stable government. And for a stable government, we need to share the power of each and every citizens. Every citizen has right to economic aspect, political aspect and social aspect because people usually fight for the resources, right? So if any country who is having a government which is biased, who do partial activities or who is based on a single religion or are based on a community, they cannot do justice to other communities, right? So let's understand. So we are having an example over here, the Belgium. As you can see, a Belgium, which is a country of Europe, and it is surrounded by different countries. Like you can see, it is surrounded by France, Luxembourg, it is surrounded by Netherlands and Germany. Now this country, Belgium, is a very small country, but it has a different ethnic composition, right? Now what is this ethnic composition? As you can see, ethnic means there are different people who belongs to different race, different language is their identity. Like as you can see, in Flemish region, Brussels is the capital and you can see the region of Wallonia. Now these regions were demarcated on the basis of people who are living in. As you can see, Flemish region is dominated by Dutch, that means the people of Denmark and the Wallonia region is dominated by the French, the French community settled here. Now how you can say a country of Belgium is dominated by other countries' people? Basically these countries were also part of, in a very older time, 17th, 18th century of different monarchies. When they were free from monarchies, they were habited by different people of different language, different culture, and that is the reason of violence. When this country was formed and the country was dominated by two different types of, re, uh, different types of ethnic composition, they are fighting for their 
different rights, social, political, economical, educational and all. We can say sharing of the resources. A small proportion of Germans of 1% is also dominating this area. So as you can see, Germans are in minority and other two communities are in majority. Definitely if we are forming a government on the basis of Dutch, on the basis of uh, French, definitely there is a chance of, uh, we can say, conflict, the civil war into this side, right? Now as you can say, Dutch are least educated and underdeveloped, French are more developed. Now, similarly, let's take another example. This is the ethnic composition we have seen. Now we have seen the idea of another ethnic composition in our neighboring country in Sri Lanka. Now, Sri Lanka got independent in 1948 from the British as like India had got its independence. Now, Sri Lanka is habitated by the majority portion of Sinhalese people. Now, Sinhalese people are having a history of almost 700, 800 years of their settlement in Sri Lanka. Right. So, these Sinhalese people speak Sinhala language. Apart from Sinhalese, there are 13 percent Sri Lankan Tamilians. Now, these 13 percent Sri Lankan Tamilians and apart from these 13 percent, there are Indian Tamilians. Indian, from Tamil Nadu, the people who were brought by the Britishers into the plantation of tea, rubber, sugarcane and coffee in Sri Lanka. Now, they were a habitant of Sri Lanka, they are living in that area, but Sinhalese doesn't allow Tamilians, now Sri Lankan Tamilians and Indian Tamilians to have a basic equality, right? Now, the government was formed on the Sinhalese majority, that is a majoritarianism government. Now, the rights of Tamilians were denied. Now, Buddhism was a major religion, was imposed over the people and become a national religion. So as you can see in the idea of Sri Lanka, a government which was based on majority religion or a majority community like Sinhalese is not having a proper uh, right of governance, right? So now Tamilians protest against these things and how Tamilians cop up with these things we will understand in different type. Now let us understand the first case in the Belgium. As you have seen in Belgium case study, we have seen Belgium is a country and it is dominated by Dutch and French, right? So it, it has a having an area less than of Haryana, but it has an ethnic composition which is diverse, right? Similarly, it has border with France, Netherlands, Germany and Luxembourg and all have different types of people, right? Similarly, as we have seen that this Belgium is dominated by the almost 1 crore people, about half of the Haryana's population, right? Still, ethnic, the ethnic people of Dutch, German and French, now these having a different type of problem that they are different, uh, they are having a different cultural aspect, different language aspect. So how they can live in a country when there is a government which is not based on equality. But we have seen that what actually Belgium has started. Now, in Belgium, the formation of government was done on the basis of equality. Now Dutch who are in majority into the whole country, almost in Flemish region, 59 percent, they accepted the participation of French into the state government on equal numbers. Now, the Wallonia region which is 40 percent dominated by French. Now French accepted the equal proportion of Dutch into the capital of central Brussels into the central government. That means they both agreed on a same number of ministers and we can say the seats and the arrangement into the assemblies. That gives equality. And the third which is German region, the community government specially formed for the Germans which also look into the interest of economical, social and different aspect of German. So there is an equal equality basis government formed in Belgium apart from the Sri Lanka. Now in capital Brussels 80 percent people speak French while 20 percent speak Dutch. French people are in minority and they are rich developed community in Belgium and Dutch community was relatively weak and got education later than French. And this led to the tension between the Dutch speaking and French speaking from 1950 to 60. So what actually uh, Belgium government has been done which is known as the Belgian government, they accepted, they amended their constitution four times to give equality to Dutch, French and Germans. They have developed a const, uh, uh, develop of an idea of a new government which is known as Belgian government which provides equality to French, Dutch and Germans into the state and central government. So they started a model of state government and central government in which both can independently work all together and both can having interest of the citizens, right. So this model has been adopted by Belgium and the another model which we have seen in Sri Lanka was adopted by Sri Lanka which is based on majority religion or the government which is based on the majority religion. This led to the civil war into Sri Lanka and the Tamilians started protest and doing violence and Sinhali is also doing violence and country become into a civil war almost for 20 years. And there the social, economical, political development of Sri Lanka got into the ruins. So that is how we can say that it is important for a country to run on a stable form of government which provides equality to religion, which provides equality to citizens, which provide economic 
we can say the three important rights, social, economic, and political, to each and every citizen. That is how that is how the power sharing is another concept of we can say balancing the power in a country. So that is all in this concept. Thank you.